Hi, I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. I want to spend a few minutes talking today about the dangers of loading your firearm with the wrong caliber or gauge ammunition. I have a demonstration prepared which will help illustrate just how some of these dangerous combinations are possible and I'll also highlight a couple of the most common ones seen in the industry. Let's get refocused on the table in front of me and we'll dive right in. I have three barrels here that I've prepared by sectioning the chamber ends of them so that you can see what the chamber looks like and also how a cartridge should fit in when it's the right caliber and how they uh, can fit in even though they're not, not the right caliber. Uh, from top to bottom I have a rifle barrel chambered in 270 Winchester. This is the chamber end and the muzzle. I also have a rifle barrel chambered in 25-06 Remington and I have a 12 gauge shotgun barrel that's been sectioned in the muzzle end. For ammunition I have two shotgun shells a 12 gauge and a 20 gauge and three center fire rifle cartridges a 30-06 Springfield, 270 Winchester and 308 Winchester. Let's begin with the shotguns. This Again, this is a 12 gauge barrel and a 12 gauge shotgun shell. We'll see how it should fit into the chamber. It slides in that far. This shotgun shell head spaces off the rim of the, of the shell and that prevents it from going in any farther than that. This is as it should be. What would happen if we accidentally loaded our 12 gauge gun with some 20 gauge shells which are smaller. As we tried to chamber one, instead of stopping where it should be, or where it should, it'll keep going. Sliding further up the barrel until it stops somewhere, bottoms out on the forcing cone in the barrel. Now if this happened and you're not fully aware of what's going on, you'll have a misfire and it might not occur to you to watch for an ejection of a cartridge or the shotgun shell and it might occur to you, not occur to you to look in the board to see what's going on and it could very easily happen that you just load up another shell and there you have a 12 gauge shell in the chamber and this 20 gauge slid up there has created a bore obstruction if you were to fire this shell now you, your rifle your barrel will come apart and uh, with a very high likelihood of uh, the shooter or any bystanders being injured. How do we know we have the right size gauge ammunition? It says so on every firearm. On this one, let's see if I can get close enough. If I can focus. It should say 12 gauge on it and generally the length of the shell as well. On the shell, on the head stamp of the shell, it'll say that it's also 12 gauge. It's always important to match what it says on the head stamp of the cartridge or shotgun shell with what it says on the barrel. Let's talk about the center fire rifles and let's see what it should look like. Here's again, this is a 270 Winchester barrel and we'll try chambering a 270 cartridge, Winchester cartridge in it. You can see that the contours of the cartridge match the contours of the chamber perfectly. It fits like a glove. This barrel bullet is uh, 0.277 inches in diameter. It's made to go down this bore, it's 0 0.270 inches. Uh, this is as it should be. Now what might happen if we accidentally tried to load a 270 Winchester cartridge into a 25-06 Remington barrel? It's not going to go in all the way. Um, the head of the cartridge is sticking out probably three-eighths of an inch, which would keep your, your bolt of your firearm from locking fully forward. Uh, most firearms are not capable of being fired when they are not locked fully into battery. 
However, there are exceptions. And don't experiment at home to find out whether or not your firearm is one of those exceptions. Um, the neck of the cartridge is too large for the neck in the chamber, and we have an interference fit, and we just can't drive this cartridge in any farther. The same scenario repeats itself if we try to chamber a 30-06 Springfield into either of the 270 or 25-06 Remington uh, chambers. We have an interference fit at the, the bullet diameter is too large and the neck diameter of the cartridge case is too large to fit in the chamber. Again, we have probably three-eighths of an inch of the cartridge sticking out beyond the end of the barrel. And that situation is even more exaggerated if we try to put the large 30-06 cartridge into the smaller 25-06 Remington barrel. We have uh, over a half inch of cartridge sticking out of the end of the barrel. Now what might happen is if we had a scenario where we had a cartridge that was short enough to fit in the, uh, the, that chamber, yet had a larger bullet diameter than the bore was meant to take. And that situation arises when we, if we were to accidentally try to shoot a 308 Winchester round or 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO round into either the 20, 270 or 25 watt 6 caliber barrels. Let's try this. This is a 308 and a 270. The cartridge head is already seated beyond the flush of the barrel, so it could easily close and chamber on that. that the action could close and lock in the battery, and this could be fired. You'll see that um, it's not a good match. There's gaps in the shoulder between the chamber and the cartridge shoulders. Uh, however, it does chamber, and you can fire your firearm. And what will happen is now you're going to try to squirt a bullet that's way too big for this barrel, delta barrel, and your pressures are going to skyrocket. Let's see what happens if we try to chamber this 308 into the 25 out 6, which is smaller yet. I have uh, probably a sixteenth of an inch of uh, room there before the cartridge is going in. Let's try a little bit of finger pressure. I can't quite get it to seat flush. However, I'm pretty sure, as, uh, if, unfortunately, we found over the years, through enough accidents have happened, that it is possible to cam your bolt closed and lock your firearm up with this 308 chambered into the 25 out 6. With this combination, the bullet is about 50 thousandths larger than the bore, and pressures will really skyrocket. When I'm talking about pressures, these um, centerfire rifle cartridges that I've shown here typically operate at around 60,000 pounds per square inch PSI. To put that in perspective, your car tires typically run on about 35 pounds per square inch. Your bicycle tires typically run on 100 PSI. And now we're talking 60,000. That's the normal operating pressure. If we were to chamber a 308 in either one of these in the 270, uh, we're generating, you can get over 100,000 pounds per square inch. In the 25 at 6, well in excess of 100,000 PSI. And those are limits which uh, are beyond the capability of these rifles to hold it and, and hold together. One of my mentors was a, uh, the gunsmith at a major ammunition company for over 30 years. And unfortunately, during the course of his, of his career, he saw more, than of, more of these guns come into his shop than, than he, he cares to see. Um, in his experience, he developed a little bit of a, a rule of thumb and that a 308 chambered in a 270 Winchester, typically the rifle still holds together but the pressure it's generated locked that gun up so tight that the shooter can't get the bolt open, he can't unload it, he, he can't do anything, it's just locked up tight. And he ends up sending it back to a gunsmith, sometimes it ends up back all the way at, the, uh, at either the ammunition manufacturer or the firearm manufacturer, and their gunsmiths end up taking it apart to see what happened. 
Uh, if a 308 Winchester gets chambered into the smaller bore of a 25 watt 6, in uh, my mentor's experience, this pressure is so high that typically the guns, the rifles themselves, come apart. And when I say apart, I mean apart, apart. And with a very high likelihood of both the shooter and any bystanders being seriously injured or worse. Again, this is no indictment of these shotgun gauges or any of these rifles. They're very fine cartridges and chamberings. Uh, they're some of the most popular ones in America. And it is strictly the uh, a function of the numbers that their sheer popular popularity drives a, a proportionally increase in the accidents that do happen with these combinations. Hopefully this demonstration has increased your awareness of just how easily these dangerous combinations can occur. The best way to prevent them by far is to always make sure that the head stamp on your ammunition matches the gauge or caliber markings on your firearm exactly. I'm John Hallis from Dauntless Endeavors. Be safe and have a great day.